Now we have 2x squared plus 2x minus 1 take away an x squared minus x plus 3. So I'm going to start off with my 2x squareds, adding in my positive 2x's and adding in my negative 1. Now I want to take away an x squared. I have an x squared I can take away. I want to take away a negative x, but I don't have a negative x to take away, so I need to add in a zero pair. We know adding zero doesn't change anything, but now I am able to take away a negative x. Now I want to take away positive 3, but I don't have positive 3 to take away, so I need to add in three groups of zero so that I now have positive 3 with which I can take away. So when I take away positive 3, I'm left with negative 4. I now then have an x squared plus 3x's minus 4 as my ending result. Now we're going to multiply two binomials. I have x plus 3, x minus 2. Note that I now have changed to a product mat, and we've seen and utilized these before with our base 10 pieces. We can do the same with algebra tiles. So it doesn't matter if I put x plus 3 along the left or on the top, it doesn't matter. But I'm going to put out x plus 3 on the left. So x plus 3, 1, two, three, and I'm going to try to line them up a little bit as best I can. Because our goal is to create a rectangle, just like we did with base 10 pieces in 277, we need to create a rectangle. And then along the top, I'm going to make x minus two. So x and then minus two. Kind of line them up. All right, now in our area here, hint area, we're going to need to fill in a rectangle. So I know x times x gives me x squared. x times negative 1, students have figured out that that would give me negative x for each one. Now if I have x times positive 1, I'm going to need positive x to go along the bottom here. And we can rotate them so it makes a nice, great rectangle. All right, but we're not quite done. We have these little pieces to fill in. I know what negative 1 times 1 is going to be negative 1. So I need to fill in all of these areas with our little units, our little negative units here. And now we've made a rectangle. Yay. Okay, so with a rectangle, notice we've kind of have it into like four different groups. If I were to split it, oops, split it here, like vertically, and split it here, we would have our x squareds, our x values, and then our unit values. But note that when we simplify this, we do have two zero pairs when we go to simplify this. So I have x squared minus 2x's plus 3x's minus 6 all together. But if I combine my zero pairs, my positive 2x's and my negative 2x's, I really only have a positive 1x that's left with negative 6. Let's clear our mat and try another example. Here we have x minus 1 times x minus 4. So along the left-hand side, I set up x minus 1. And along the top, I set up x minus 4. We know x times x gives me x squared. And if I have x times negative 1, 
I have negative 4x's. And x times negative 1, in order to get this area, we need to rotate it. And this length would be negative x. And then finally, the only thing that would fit here would be our units. However, I have negative 1 times negative 1 turning into positive 1. What's great about showing it this way is that each one of the pieces, if we were to use the distributive property, are are modeled with this. So I have an x squared and I have negative 5 x values and pos I should say I have negative 4 x values minus another 1 x value and then positive 4. So if I were to distribute this using FOIL, I would see all of those four pieces, but I can see when we see it visually I can see my zero pairs more, more efficiently, but then I can also count up all my x's together so that I see I have negative 5 x's plus positive 4. And one more to try. Now we have negative 2x plus 2. So I know it looks silly having that negative there, but it's there. We have negative 2x plus 2 and then x minus 3. So let's start building this. I have negative x times x. I know that that area is going to have to be x squared, negative x squared. Similarly, I have negative x times x. So I'm going to need another one of those. Okay. I can have negative x times negative 1, which would provide me with our three x's. And I would have another 3 down here. So notice I'm still building that rectangle. Now I have x times positive 1, so I have more positive x values. Kind of lopsided, that's okay, we get the idea. And we have negative 1s times positive 1s, so each of these little pieces are going to be filled in with our negative x value, or excuse me, our negative unit values, so that we end up building our full rectangle. So building that full rectangle is our goal. It has to be a rectangle. Just like our base 10 models, they had to be a rectangle. All right, now I see that I have Come on. Okay. I have negative 2x squared plus in this area I have positive 6x's. Here I have positive 2x's and in this area I have negative 6 units. Combining them all together, we see that we then have a positive 8x, so negative 2x squared plus 8x minus 6. Now, I have a few additional problems that are not on our note sheet, but we need to know how to factor using algebra tiles. So I'm going to clear my mat, and I'm going to add three factoring ones, and I'll send them in your email. So now I'm starting with x squared minus 4x plus 3. Our goal is to, now that we know the area, we want to find what are the dimensions of our rectangular area. So I want to try to make a rectangle out of these, but be careful because we do know that with a rectangle, Sometimes we have to manipulate it a little bit, giving us zero pairs perhaps, in order to get our result. So if I look here, oops, I'm missing one. All right, x squared minus 4x's plus 3. Well, I know that these could line up here.
and it wouldn't make sense. I don't have enough pieces or unit pieces, and I would have to add something here. Oh, what if I take this one and turn it on its side? It's almost like a puzzle. Aha, we have made our rectangle. So notice that in order to get a positive x squared, we would need to have a positive x here and a positive x here. Okay. If I wanted negative x's here, I'm going to take here multiplied by this x. So these would all have to be negatives in order for me to get a negative 3x right along this side. And if I wanted this to be a negative x, I would also have to have a negative here since negative 1 times x would give me negative x. And then it falls in line that negative 1 times negative 1 we know is positive. So there's our positive 3. So now we know our dimensions. Our dimensions are x minus 1 times x minus 3. So working backwards. Let's try another one. Now we have x squared plus 5x's minus 6. Again, we're going to try to build that rectangle and see what we can do. If I were to put these here to start lining them up, I bet that these are going to have to fall in line underneath here. But I only can do five of them, or excuse me, Hmm, let's see, I have an extra unit, but I don't have an x value. But, I, look, I have two x spaces available. So here's my hint that I'm going to need to add in a zero pair. So I'm going to keep following in line with the same color, but I can add in a zero pair here. So these two would cancel, leaving me still with our positive 5x's, and then all my units are being used. So if I were to look at my dimensions of our x squared, a positive x squared here and a positive x squared here, knowing that I would have a positive times a positive to get a positive x squared here. And then when I look across, these would all have to be positive units, since a positive times a positive stays positive. So these would have to be positive units. Notice it sometimes takes a while to build the opposite direction, so be patient with yourself as you're trying to work through the possibilities. And here, in order to get a negative x, I would have to have negative here. And that would fall in line, too, with negative 1 times positive 1, giving me my negatives as well. So now we know our dimensions are x minus 1 and x plus 6 for our dimensions of our rectangular array. And one more example.